Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the host of that so late show. It's Hello and welcome back to the Not So Late Show. My name is Ross Briley. This is the UK's finest alternative comedy chat show, broadcast directly from my dining room slash office slash personal prison. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share this with your friends and family as well because the more people watch the Not So Late Show, the less this seems like a cry for help. Now, if you're struggling to stay fit and healthy during the lockdown, maybe consider signing up with an impersonal trainer. It's a bit like a personal trainer, but they couldn't give a toss about who you are or what you want to achieve. You simply receive one email a week, BCC to your inbox, instructions are given in the coldest, most brutal way possible, and quite frankly, you can choose whether to carry out the exercises or not. And remember, whilst the lockdown rules are being eased, it's still important to stay alert and stay vigilant. Someone in the park coughed on my notebook the other day, and as you can see, there are still remnants of the virus all over the cover. Now let's see what's coming up on this week's show. Stupid question. Polar bears. Moustache. There's a magical place we're going there now. In this economic climate, we know it's important to get your little ones started early. That's why the Fisher Price My First Self Assessment Tax Return is currently half price. Plus, if you order before January the 31st, you'll receive this free book. Now let's take a bit of a lighter touch on the show as we're joined by comedian, climate change expert and bearded Scotsman. It is, of course, Dr. Matthew Winning. Matt, welcome to the show. Or all round of applause. Trying to get, get a bit of atmosphere. Hard to get an atmosphere, isn't it, in this sort of... Uh environment do you get any commission for using the word climate or environment in conversation i do yes climate change it is still happening oh, it's still going on mate it's still out there just kind of get up to you know up to no good i think it might be technically the warmest uh, april on record nobody noticed because nobody could go outside are there any uh, are there any upsides to, uh, to 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 our current situation i guess you know for example if we can't go to the ice caps because no one's allowed to leave their house does it matter if they melt it's fine to be inside your house just now but if we do have to stay in our house for the next 10 to 20 years you might need to buy a snorkel from amazon how many coronaviruses will it take for us to reset the damage we've done to the planet a coronavirus every year for the next 10 years so we've reset the clock back to 2010 where things were still fucking terrible another two more coronaviruses before we get back to the 90s I, and i assume that that culture will then reset as well i hope so i really do hope so i think if oasis could reform right now it would probably be the main thing to bring this country together. If you could warm any part of the uh, the globe in particular, Matt, which would it be? That's a stupid question. Does it make you feel any better that we have failed as a country to react to coronavirus until it's already very much upon us? Epidemiologists and other people, it's nice to see them get a taste of what I have to put up with on a day-to-day -day basis of people spouting unscientific nonsense about things they know absolutely nothing about. All these sorts of things that I... Uh, experience over quite a long time period and probably will for the majority of my life, they're getting a very concentrated dose of that. Speaking of uh, concentrated doses, um, is there any truth in the fact that you can inject bleach directly into the earth? Certainly give it a shot. Uh, maybe we should uh, try and put more bleach into the atmosphere as well. Uh, maybe 8pm on a Thursday, make the frontline workers feel a bit special as well as we burn bleach around the earth. Bleach the sky. What's the worst that's going to happen? It's going to rain bleach. We're inside. We're inside. Exactly, we're inside. It's not going to be a big deal. Um, I was wondering how many plants and trees I have to grow at home to uh, carbon offset a week in Malaga. You'd need to sort of turn your uh, house into a garden centre for the rest of your life. Part of the whole coronavirus thing, I think, is a, a very snappy name, a snappy title. There's been many conversations about a, a rebrand. Climate change to Judgment Day would be good. Apocalypse soon. Climate change to the lost world works as well. I mean, that would be good, to be honest. Get the, dino, get the old dinos back. I reckon they'd have some advice to give about, you know, extinction events and whatnot. They probably were one of the least successful at surviving a sort of global catastrophe. Is there any positivity uh, from our current scenario? Is this further emboldened your pessimistic well, view? People often want hope because they uh, are weak, 
better with some of the changes that we might might be necessary going forward. People might get used to not going abroad because they're afraid that they might not come back. People doing this sort of thing, making uh, bullshit from their houses, uh, putting on their suits in, in their own homes and making it look professional uh, is perhaps the future, uh, at least a few days a week for many people. Dr. Matt Winning, thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure. Oh, lovely to be here. Are you ready to say goodbye to the polar bear? Polar bears depend on the Arctic ice. They hunt there and raise their young there. But the ice is shrinking. When the ice goes, where do the polar bears go? They go to Toys R Us! That's right, polar bears, children, adults, you're all welcome here. Because we've got Christmas lockdown with all the games and toys you could ever need. And for a limited time only, you can pick up Captain Beefheart's Ketamine Playhouse for only $19.99. But hurry, this K-hole won't last forever. There's fucking millions of toys yet under one roof. John, first things first, I've bought you a meat processing plant. What? I've taken all your money and I've invested it in meat. Why? Well, because I'm your accountant and I fucking love meat. It's a great investment. Bullshit. It's a sausage factory. Yes, but we'll rebrand it. John Ham's Quality Meat Emporium. My future is tied up in this mess because of you. Yes, yes it is. Are you happy? Good. Well, I'll be off then, John. See you later. Now it's time for some viewer submissions. Fans out there have been sending their videos in droves about how they are coping with the current situation. Starting off with Peter Farries, age 48, from Farsley. Day 8 in this place. I have two blue ribbons left. One, two. Just two blue ribbons. I also have yogurts, salmon, sweet potato, bread, pasta, sugar and three other entirely full cupboards. But only two blue ribbons. With the pressure of societal norms gone, I have grown a moustache. Now, finally, I can showcase my hidden personality to all. There is no one here to see it. Only two blue ribbons. What are these? I do not remember them, but they are here. They are hard to wear. I am cutting the carpet with scissors. It has taken me all morning. I usually do this anyway on a Tuesday. The outside looks incredible. I am allowed to exercise, but I cannot. My exercise usually lasts around 35 minutes. But we have to go out for an hour, and you're yelled at if you stop. Plus, Gemma Atkinson won't let me have a barbecue. Only two blue ribbons. Oh shit, there's three. Make sure you don't eat them all at once. Our second video comes from friend of the show and comedian Eddie Hurst. Let's check in to see how he's coping. Having a breakdown, having a breakdown, having a breakdown, having a nervous breakdown. Great stuff. Thanks ever so much for watching the show, and in particular those people who got in touch with answers to last week's big question, who's older, Gary Newman or Gary Oldman? In particular, this incredibly aggressive reply from Dom Hodgson. Thanks, Dom. I hope you're all right. But the winner was this delightful story from our friend Dave from Tadcaster. Question was about Gary Oldman or something like that, but I'm like, got my feet up in my front room watching Antiques Roadshow. They won't take any of my stuff. It's not from the right era, apparently. I look up from my paper, who's there? Gary Neville. Walking right through the middle of my house. I said, what are you doing? This is a private residence. Said, not according to this map. Says it's a public footpath. Said, oh, hang about, Mr. Premier Championship Player Man. Don't you dare take one step backwards. To prove a point, he does, doesn't he? Stands on my son's scale electric. Instantly dead. You can say, well, what about Gary Neville on the telly and that? That is not Gary Neville. It 
It looks like Gary Neville, and it moves like Gary Neville. It's not actually him. If they've infiltrated society to the point where they're imitating our property magnates, who's next? Blair? <laughs> All of that is why I brought a gun to protect my family and my comatose wife. Diabetes, if you're asking, nobody is. This week's big question is flipped on its head. Please ask us a question and we will try our very best to answer it in next week's show, which will be the last one of the series. At the NSL Show or the NSL Show at gmail.com. Speaking of next week, we'll be speaking to cult Hollywood superstar Samuel L. Claxon. I have had it with these mother snakes on this mother plane. And we'll be finding out if I have telekinesis. Nope. But until then, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, stay alert, control the virus, shove it up your arse.